is the cross where Jesus Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word. You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's Word. Praise the Lord. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in on this fine Sunday morning as we tune into the Word of God. We're in John chapter 4, John chapter 4 and verse 45, and where we're, where we're going to start. And as you're turning there, I'd just like to praise the Lord for this opportunity to preach His Word through radio. We do not take it lightly, and we pray that you are blessed because we know that we are greatly blessed by just being able to do it. So thank the Lord for it, and we pray that you are blessed by it. John chapter four, and we're going to start verse 45. And the Bible says, then when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast. For they also went unto the feast. And when the Lord returned to Galilee, he was given a favorable reception. They were they were glad they gladly accepted him. Hey, there's Jesus. He was given a, a favorable reception because the people had seen all the things that he had done, all the miracles and mighty works and great things that Jesus had done. Because Jesus did a lot of a great and mighty works, but the greatest work he did was on the cross. It most certainly was where he laid down his life for me and for you. But many people were attracted to the miracles, to the healings, to the feeding of the 5,000. They were totally amazed by that, and they, they totally welcomed Jesus. So now they are willing to have him in their midst of Galilee. They're glad, but wait, not just because they acknowledge him to be the Son of God. That wasn't the real, but because they were curiously interested in the one who aroused so much attention, so much they were talking about, so much uh, uh, fame went about the land of all the things that he was doing. He could heal people. He could make the lame walk, the blind see, and yet here they were attracted to the things that he could do. Many are attracted to the things that Jesus can do, but they do not accept him as the son of God, and that is true, truly is, and those those miracles he did were great, but that's not why he came. The Bible says he came to seek and to save that which is lost. That is his sole purpose for coming. So verse 46 tells us, So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Hey, again, the village of Cana was honored by the visit of the Lord. This is his second time coming through. But the Bible says there was a nobleman whose son was sick, a nobleman. And the verse 47 says, When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and he besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Hey, he heard that Jesus had been in Judea and had now returned to Galilee. He must have had some faith. He really must have had some faith in the ability of Christ just from the things he had heard about him to heal his son because he came directly to him and asked him, hey, to come heal my dying son. So you know he heard a lot of things about Jesus and the miracles that he was doing and the great and mighty works because he, he came right to him. And if his son was dying, it was serious. If his son was dying, I am sure, that he had tried other things. If his son was dying, he was looking for the one that he had the most faith that, hey, this person can save my son. And the Bible says that he was going right to Jesus. He seems to have a greater faith and trust in the Lord than a lot of people that were around Jesus. 
Yes, that's what I said. A lot of people are around Jesus because the, the thing that was most precious to him was dying. That was his son. And he was seeking out the only one that he knew could save him, the son of a certain nobleman. He, he was sick at Comert. Capernaum, and the man, this man was undoubtedly, he must have been a Jew employed by Herod the king, a nobleman. A nobleman has just about everything this world has to offer. You know that? I mean, they, they're right up there with the king. They own a lot of things and have a lot of power, have a lot of servants, have a lot of possessions. And all those things that man had, he had money and he had power and he had respect and he had position and he had authority and he had all kind of contacts and friends in high places. I mean, he was right there rubbing shoulders with the king himself and he had the money to buy whatever he wanted and he had plenty of power to get done whatever he wanted. He had a great and mighty position. The Bible says he was a nobleman. It most certainly does. But I want you to know, he had all these things that the world has to offer, but yet he could not heal his own son. He couldn't buy it. He didn't have enough money. There was nobody that could heal it with being just paid by. There was nobody that had enough power to do that. But Jesus, with all the things that he had, all the money and power and respect and position, authority, none of those could help him in his desperate hour of need. But the Bible says that he went to Jesus. Amen. Where do you go in your desperate hour of need? Because it doesn't matter how much power or money or respect or position or authority or how many contacts you have or how many friends in high places when things get serious like that you better know who to contact you better know whose name to call and that name is Jesus amen so with all the things that this man had in this world he could not save his only son his own son but the Bible says that he went to the one that could. Listen to me. There is a very extremely valuable lesson to learn at this, this nobleman's sick son. That, hey, we are all sick with a sin nature. And no matter how much you love your child, no matter how much you care for them, no matter how much you want good for them, you listen to me, you cannot save your own child. You have to take them to Jesus. Amen. He's the only one that can save their soul. And the Bible says, do you have faith? Do you have faith like this man to take them to Jesus, to lay them down at Jesus' feet, to throw up your hands and say, no, there is nothing that I can do, Jesus, but you can. I have faith and trust that you can do it. There is an extremely valuable lesson to learn from this nobleman and the faith that he has in Jesus, because you cannot save even your own child. As much as I love my children and could, would lay down my life for them, I cannot save them from that thing called sin. There's only one person that can and his name is Jesus who can take the penalty of sin like he did on that cross. He can save their soul, save from the fires of hell and take them to heaven. Amen. That's the only name that can save them is the name of Jesus. So the next verse says, John chapter 4 and verse 48 then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. You know, he was speaking not only to the nobleman here, but to the people in general. Many people desired to see miracles. And I can just tell you today, many people say that I just need a sign. I just need God to write it in the sky. I just need a massive sign. Can I just say God's already given you a sign for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. The Bible says whosoever. That is 
every person, each and every person, red, yellow, black, white, short, rich, tall, powerful, the people in the gutter, Jesus came to save all, the Bible says. There is nobody to be elected. Jesus said he elected everybody to be saved, but it's your decision whether or not you accept him as God's son, as your personal savior. These people desire to see miracles before they would believe. And many people today say that I have heard him tell me that to my face. I just need a sign. I need a giant sign. Let me just say, God has given you a sign. He's given you his word. He's given you his son. He's given you his Bible. He has given you everything that you need to believe. But it makes me think of in Luke chapter 16 with the rich man and Lazarus. And at the very end of that story, the rich man is in hell and he wanted Lazarus to go to his father's house and warn his father and his brothers not to come to this place for I am tormented in this place. But Abraham told him, no, Lazarus is not going. Abraham said they have Moses and the prophets. In other words, they have the preachers and the Bible. Then that he said, if they will not believe that, they won't even believe it if a dead man rose from the grave and told them themselves. In the same today, we have a preacher, we have a Bible, we have God's holy word, and they, if they won't believe that, they won't even believe it if one rose from the grave and told them. Amen? That's what the Bible says. The Lord Jesus was not as pleased with a faith that was based on miracles as he was with that which was based on his word alone. God's word is so powerful. He wants you to have faith in him. What did he tell Thomas? Thomas said, I must see. I must touch his hands. I must touch his side. I must see him for myself. And he told Thomas, you see me, you believe because you see me, but blessed are those that have not seen, and yet they believe. They believe. I want you to look at it this way. The next time you meet somebody and they tell you, hey, my name's so-and-so, and you look right at them and say, no, I don't really believe that. I don't believe that's who you who you are. Watch and see if they don't seriously get offended. Watch and see if they don't get mad at you. Watch and see if they don't give you an evil eye. Why? Because you're telling them that's not who you really are. How do you think Jesus feels when people say that's he's not the Messiah? He's not the Son of God. He's not who he says he is. No, believe me. Jesus doesn't like that. Oh, blessed are those that accept Jesus as the Messiah, as their Savior, as he is God in the flesh. So it is is more honoring to him to believe the things that he says than to believe signs or miracles. Why? Because you're believing his word, although it's human nature to want to see and touch and feel, but that's where faith comes in. You must believe in faith. The Lord teaches us that we should first believe and then uh, we will see, the Bible says. You must first believe, then you will see. That's how faith works. That's stepping out on faith. Here where it talks about signs and wonders, both refer to miracles. Signs are miracles that have a deep meaning or significance. Wonders are miraculous miracles that cause men to be amazed by their supernatural qualities. When he told the lame man, get up and walk, and the lame man got up and walked, Everybody was just shocked. Hey, that's a wondrous miracle. It most certainly is. And so, verse 49, The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. He said, Jesus, please come, my child. If you don't come, my child is going to die. Hey, this nobleman, he was persistent of truth, faith, and he believed that the Lord Jesus could do his son good and heal him, and he wanted more than anything for Jesus, for the Lord to come visit his son. But can I just say that this man did not fully understand how powerful the words of Jesus us truly are. Not yet he didn't. He thought that Jesus would have to be at the boy's side before he could heal him. He thought he would have to be in the physical presence of his son. Hey, the Savior didn't rebuke him 
for this. No, he most certainly didn't, but he rewarded him for the measure of faith that this man showed. Now, yet this man may not have fully understood how powerful the words of Jesus truly are, but he is about to. And verse 50 tells us, Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. So here we'll see the the man's faith is growing. He exercised what faith he had, and the Lord gave him more. Amen? And if you'll do that, the Lord will give you more. Faith is just like a muscle. The more you use it, the bigger it's going to get. So Jesus sent him home with the promise, Your son lives. Amen. Your son lives. The son had been healed without any miracle or visible proof. The man believed the word of the Lord and he started home. That was faith in action. He believed what God said and it went down to his feet and he started walking. Amen. When you believe what God says in your life, your feet will start moving. Amen. Why? Because you truly believe it. It's not something the preacher said it sounds good, or I ought to do that. No, you believe it right down to the core of your being. Why? Because it's going to move down to your feet, and you're going to start moving forward. Amen? Moving forward for the Lord. And verse 51, and as he was now going down, his servant, his servants met him and told him, saying, thy son liveth. Now, hold on a second. That's the second time he's saying that. Jesus told him, you go ahead, thy son liveth. And as he's on his way home in faith, believing that the words of Jesus had said had healed his son, here his servant comes looking for him, and he tells him, thy son liveth. Amen. So a divine encounter, God lined up here for these two people to run into together, for them to run into each other and him let him know, hey, your son's living. Can you imagine his servant sitting at home? He might have put that servant over charge over his son. Hey, you watch him. You take care of him. You look after him while I go and look for Jesus. Amen. So here the servant is sitting there watching the son. The son's dying. He is burning up with a fever. He's almost dead and you imagine that servant sitting at home and he sees that boy all of a sudden get better and he's healed just miraculously but in a moment and he says in his heart Woo, glory to God I must run find my master and tell him the good news that his boy's living not even notice, knowing yet that Jesus' spoken word is what healed that boy. But the servant seen that, hey, something's different. Hey, this boy's gotten better. Hey, there's a change in this boy. Like when somebody gets saved, they, might, they may not know fully understand what happened, but hey, they see a change in their life. All of a sudden, they've gotten better. Amen. That's what happened in this boy's life. With just a spoken word, it happened. I mean, he healed him right then and there. And verse 52 tells us, then inquired he of them. That is, the master is asking the servants here. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Yesterday at the seventh hour. So as he's He's now nearing home. His servants came out to meet him. And with a happy smile and good news, your son is well. I don't believe this man was shocked at all. I don't believe he was shocked at all at the announcement that your son lived. Your boy's completely better. Why? Because he had sought out Jesus and he believed the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he had put him to to action in his life. Have you believed what God has spoken to you? Even if you are saved, have you believed what God has told you and put it to your feet? Do you go out and witness? Do you go out and preach his word? Do you pass out a track? Do you live it out in his, his life? Are you a loving husband, a loving mother, a loving father, a loving grandfather? Do you tell your family about Jesus? Do you set the example? Have you put that faith down to your feet and put it into action? like this man has. Amen? 
The father inquired of the servants as to the time, what exact time he wanted to know when, but not only when or what day, what was the what what exact time was it? And they answered him yesterday at the seventh hour hour right then and there and that tells you it wasn't a gradually this boy didn't gradually get better no it instantly took place as Jesus spoke the words that boy instantly got better he most certainly did isn't it funny how sometimes in our own life we have something happen and we we know that Jesus did it God must have lined that up but as time goes on we start to think well maybe it was a coincidence well maybe that person was just there at that time because of this well maybe this because of that no you listen to me that's the devil trying to steal your faith that's what that is God lines up the circumstances if you are living for him God lines up the circumstances circumstances and he wants the glory out of it and that is the devil coming along trying to steal the glory from you from God he most certainly is it was not by coincidence it was not by chance it didn't just happen God lined that up do not let the devil come along and rob that from you because he wants to why is he doing that he's chipping away at your faith why is the devil here John 10 10 tells us the thief cometh to steal kill and destroy and by doing that he's come along he's planting doubt in your mind just like he did with Adam and Eve in the garden hey God didn't really say that God didn't really do that God didn't really line that up that was just by chance that just happened no sir no ma'am he's a liar and he wants to steal your faith don't you let him do it God ordained that God lined it up he most certainly did if you're saved and you belong to him there's not one thing that, that can happen to you that doesn't pass through the hand of God God has, a, has the ability to stop it at any time he wants. God is in control of the time and the intensity of any trial you go through in your life. In verse 53, so the father knew it. He knew it. It was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth and himself believed and his whole house Hey, that's so important, isn't it? He put that in the Bible. He believed and his own house. Do you know what the statistics are when the man and a family get saved first that his wife and children will get saved? It's like there's a 93% chance that the, the rest of the family get, get, will get saved. But if the wife gets saved first, there's like a 17% uh, chance the rest of them will get saved. Why is that? Because God has ordained the man as the leader of the home. That is why he is a leader of the home and he's going to hold each and every man responsible for that role. He most certainly is. And I want you to know Jesus put that in there. Thy son liveth and himself believed and his whole house. Amen. There could now be not the slightest doubt after this wonderful miracle that Jesus did this at the seventh hour. He did. He healed this man's son. It's, this is a great example of someone saying, I don't have to see Jesus with my physical eyes. I don't have to physically touch him for Jesus to perform a miracle in my life. And he doesn't have to physically touch you. With the, the moment I got saved, Jesus became so real. He was realer than anything I've ever touched. Amen. Have you ever put your faith and trust in him? Have you ever repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Because there is no other decision that truly matters in this life. Make sure you're like this man, that you run to Jesus and put your faith and trust in him. Amen. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning into Crossbound Ministry Radio Broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $25 or more, we will send you a copy of Ray Comfort's book, Nothing Created Everything. 
Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook or visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a woman in need of help with with your pregnancy, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There's locations in Inverness and Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507 and Bruce Kaufman Construction providing all your home building needs, 352-400-0230. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida, 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200.